So we're going to talk about um, the light dependent reactions, which occur. So you've got your chloroplast, um, you've got the grana, thylakoid, small grana, thylakoid, small grana. So these here are the sign of the light dependent reactions, and the light dependent reactions take light and produce ATP and split water, and they put the electron onto NADP, forming NADPH. And then it produces oxygen as a waste product, and the waste product goes off into the air. Now, the light independent reactions occur here in the stroma. And the light independent reactions, also known as the Calvin cycle, take carbon dioxide and use the NADPH and the ATP yeah. to reduce that carbon dioxide to produce everything that's used in almost all living organisms. Uh, it's an amazing process. Right, so if we actually look at what's inside the membrane, so we've got a thylakoid membrane here, another thylakoid membrane here, and so the stroma is here and here, and this is the thylakoid interior. Now, if we start with a light capturing blob, and that light capturing blob is known as a photosystem, and this is photosystem one. And then we have another light capturing blob over here, which is known as photosystem two. Now, photosystem one at the center of it has a single chlorophyll A molecule. That's in what's called the reaction center. When it absorbs lots of different wavelengths of light, it then loses an electron to a higher state of energy. That goes through some carrier molecules and then back to photosystem one. And the carrier molecules They push protons from the stroma into the thylakoid interior to generate a proton gradient. Those protons then flow out through another big protein blob. And as they flow out, they generate, because they're moving down their concentration radiant out of the thylakoid interior into the stroma, they make, what do they make? ATP. And this process of ATP production is called cyclic, because it's the same electron so it's the electron being cycled back round from photosystem one, back to photosystem one. It's cyclic, photo, because it involves light, and then cyclic, photophosphorylation. Okay, so that's cyclic photophosphorylation. If we now have a look at what goes on in photosystem two. Now photosystem two is also going to get hit by light, and it's also going to get hit by lights of lots of different wavelengths. And then at the centre of the photosystem 2 is a, another chlorophyll A molecule. Now that's then going to lose an electron. And the electron is going to travel down a chain of carriers, across down to photosystem 1. Now as it moves down that chain of carriers, it's going to move hydrogens across the membrane. Those hydrogens are then going to flow out, generating more ATP. At the end of the, this though, that electron, the electron that's been moved from photosystem two to photosystem one, that ends up doing something different. And that is that it gets picked up by a big carrier blob molecule called NAD. And when it picks up that electron, it becomes reduced to NADPH. Now, in order to replace that, 
we take water and the water is split using the energy from light to produce oxygen which comes off as a waste product hydrogens which help to add to the hydrogen gradient to generate the ATP and electrons which are there to re replace the electron that's been lost from photosystem 2 down to photosystem 1. So this, because you haven't cycled the electron, is non-cyclic photophosphorylation. 